Rights program, uh, which is language intervention through engaging stories. Uh, that program was first created uh, following a 2007 uh, conference that was attended by myself and a colleague. So the program is delivered in small groups, uh, typically dyads, but it could be three children in a group. A communicative disorders assistant facilitates the group. So the SLP has provided um, the language goals and identifies which stage of the program is appropriate for the student. The goal is to have a block of about eight to 10 weekly sessions. Each session is 45 minutes and children receive one to two blocks in a school year. There are four uh, stages of the program. Uh, so I had mentioned earlier that after an assessment or an evaluation, we identify at what which stage would be appropriate for the student. So the first stage is language foundations. Uh, the second stage is narrative foundations. The third is advanced narratives. And the fourth is language for higher order thinking. In each stage, there's a variety of activities that are used to target skills with increasing levels of difficulty. So regardless of what stage the child is in, we have the goals of vocabulary, oral narration, language structure, so grammar and syntax, uh, verbal reasoning, comprehension, and phonological awareness. In stage one, language foundation, we're supporting children who are um, to develop early communication skills. We'd be using picture books in this stage, what's referred to as tier one vocabulary. So those everyday words uh, that would be familiar to most students. Um, we're also working with uh, temporal sequences. So we're not really in narratives like the stories with a problem and a solution. It's more temporal sequences. So Eric Carl books are a perfect example and we're including those in our uh, language foundation um, as well as Dear Zoo. So there's a repeated pattern and there is language and there's a temporal sequence of first, then, next, last. When we look at stage two, now we're looking at introducing basic story structure so and the beginnings of a little more complex language so the books that we're choosing have a simple plot some complex sentences and they have tier two vocabulary so tier two vocabulary uh, refers to those high frequency words uh, that are found across many subjects and they're also likely to be learned in an academic setting and the books that we choose for this one, many of the stories that we're using in, in this phase uh, come from the Farm Tale series uh, by Heather Amory. In stage three, advanced narratives, the goal is for children to develop a more thorough understanding of story structure and more complex communication skills. So the books that we're choosing have more complexity to them in terms of obstacles to solving a problem. So think of the books like The Gruffalo by Julia Donaldson or Russell the Sheep by Rob Scotton. These have more advanced plots and so uh, that helps extend the narrative skills that we're building and looking to build uh, with our students. And there's also more complex sentences. In stage four, the language for higher order thinking, now we're moving to simple chapter books uh, with complex plots and vocabulary that includes not just tier two vocabulary, so those words that would be found across many subjects, uh, like a word like gigantic or enormous rather than a tier one word like big, but we're also introducing tier three vocabulary. So these are low frequency words that are domain specific and higher level thinking. We're looking at developing the child's ability to draw inferences and um, make connections with, with characters. How are, what are the, what shows us that this character is a risk taker or, or what shows us that this character is a little hesitant and not one to take risks. So, you know, we're moving towards that more academic task in that the children will be introduced to in junior. Within the light sessions, we have our lesson plans 
that the CDA, the Communicative Disorders Assistant, is implementing. And embedded within our lesson plans are specific strategies. So the first one is we use repeated interactive read-alouds. One book that we'll use within a session is actually carried over two sessions. So in the first session, the, the um, CDA, the Communicative Disorders Assistant, who facilitates the language intervention, she is introducing uh, a book the first way, the first session, and she's using a very conversational style, engaging the children in predictions and, and her own comments about uh, what she sees happening in the story. She uses open-ended questions while she's reading to engage the students. I wonder what you think might happen in this story about Good Night Gorilla. Use the title, use the picture. Can you make a prediction? What do you think we might see when we open our book? In a second reading of the book, however, she may decide that she may be instead focusing on the story elements. So as she's reading the story and she's and the children are familiar with it, she'll start to identify aspects of the story which are this is the setting. Oh, we see, you know, this story takes place on Apple Tree Farm and that's the setting. And then she'll continue reading and she'll refer to the characters and then comment all oh, the characters are the, you know, the the people in the story. In that way the children get a deeper level of understanding of the story and they also have different aspects that are being highlighted that are going to later be worked into specific activities. The second technique that I'd like to highlight is um, vocabulary. At the Upper Grand, we refer to it as the Super Six and it refers to the six steps that you take to help develop vocabulary knowledge in students. The six steps are say, explain, give an example, repeat, personalize, and interact. So when we come across the word magical in the story, we're gonna say the word, and then we'll give a quick uh, explanation of its meaning. At the end of the story, we'll come back to that word magical that we came across, and we'll say, and the, the CDA will give an example of, um, you know, when they experience something magical in their life, then to give the children a chance to, um, to help them sort of develop that phonological memory of the word, they say magical. When I, I want you to say the word magical after me. So magical. Now think of a time they'll ask the child to personalize. Talk to your elbow partner about a time when you experienced something that was magical or you saw something that was magical. The last part, which is interact, it may be that the uh, CDA will say, okay, I'm gonna say something and you need to tell me if it's magical. Um, and if it's magical, you'll say uh, magical. And so in that way, we're building vocabulary knowledge. The context is the story, and then we're highlighted in the story, and then we give a very prescribed process of how we're going to engage the child in deepening their understanding of that word. One of the more important uh, strategies that we use within our LIGHTS program, which could be implemented by a classroom teacher, is highlighting story elements as we are reading a story and then building on that knowledge within small group, within the small group uh, tasks after the story is read. Pig gets stuck. This is Apple Tree Farm. That's talking about the setting. This is Mrs. Boot the farmer. She has two children named Poppy and Sam and a dog called Rusty. They're telling us who the characters are in our story. On the farm, there are six pigs. The pigs live in a pen with a little house, and the smallest pig is called Curly. There's another character. Remember, characters are the people and places in our story. And so it's really making a very um, explicit connection between the stories and the elements that make up all stories. The next area that I'd like to talk about is uh, pictographs. 
because we know that many children um, with learning disabilities, children with developmental language disorder, there's many often have working memory issues as well. And one of the ways that we can support children is to develop strategies around comprehension and oral formulations, planning in advance of, um, of, of speaking or writing. When we have taught the child the elements of a story, so character, setting, problem, response to the problems or emotional response, actions to solve the problem, obstacle that may have entered, plan to resolve, to get around the obstacle and solve the problem, and then finally the resolution. As we're teaching them that, and we're making the connections to the story, we develop a, a graphic organizer with the story elements, and we have the child do a quick representation. So it's gotta be a line drawing. Okay, so we just read our storybook. It's time to do our pictures. We're gonna talk about the elements that we talked about in our story. So we're always gonna start here with the setting. That means where were they in our story or when does our story take place? Do you remember where they were in our story? You got it, they were at the farm. Okay, so these are gonna be really quick drawings, stick people only, not artwork, and we're gonna make sure it stays right in this column. So we have 20 seconds to draw something to remind us about the farm. I think I'm gonna draw a barn. So here's my barn. Big door for the animals to go in, some hay up top. And our farm is called, do you remember? Apple tree farm. So I'm gonna draw an apple tree beside my farm, my barn here, so that I remember that's what the farm was called. Here's my apple tree. We also um, are working on developing phonological awareness. So to start with, uh, we're gonna look at word awareness. A student can demonstrate word awareness by counting spoken words or words in print. Um, so using a book, you could pick a short sentence or a phrase. The cover or the title of the book is ideal because it's always very clear, very big, very bold. So to start with, you would read the title of the story, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Then see if the student can count how many words are there. So we're engaging it we're connecting those develop uh, those phonological awareness uh, tasks to our book reading, uh, but we're also um, we're also addressing phonological awareness as as specific skills um, that are targeted in um, activities after the book is read. 